On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the Hickey the five from Brisbane. Brought it to ground. McNamara swoops on it, clears the pack and scores a miraculous goal for Melbourne. Fitzsimon just dribbles it off the carpet inside 50 and here goes Bannon again. She arrived on the spot too quickly, takes possession cleanly, runs to the top of the goal square and is that the first nail in the coffin? There's holding and a free and that'll kick. Be it. Oh. Melbourne are through to the grand final. They've cleared the final hurdle in the AFLW for the very first time. That's how it sounded at the MCG on Saturday afternoon. Mick Stenier is the Demons coach. Mick, congratulations. Welcome back to the program. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a tight finish in the end. It but, was. Uh, certainly happy to be advancing for one more week. Does, did that feel like the culmination of a long journey to get there at last? Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, I, I think we wouldn't. Wouldn't change anything in the past because it sort of uh, made us the, the resilient group that we are at the moment. Uh, and it certainly had an impact on you know, things like list management and the way we design our football program. And uh, yeah, a lot of lessons along the way. And, and hopefully yeah, we keep this group together for a little while. And yeah, on Saturday, we, we prove that we're, we're good enough to uh, be the best in the comp. It looked like um, sort of early stages of the last quarter that you might have a, a cruisy last 20 minutes and just get to soak it all up. It did get a bit tense watching. Well, how did you find it in the box towards the end? Yeah, it was certainly nice to, to get that goal early in the last quarter. Uh, but then, yeah, I think a bit of fatigue kicked in in the middle of the quarter. and uh, I think there was a lot of... At halfway through the quarter, when we lost a bit of momentum, there was some key personnel on the bench. It was just one of those things. We just didn't time it too well. And then, yeah, we tried to control the game at the back end. But, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a few things there we uh, we didn't quite nail that we've been working on. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try uh, sharpen up in a few areas there this week. But, no, I think the intensity was uh, the best thing from our group, just the way they competed and the spirit that, uh, that they gave from start to finish. And, um, yeah, they deserved the result. Yeah, that, that's absolutely the truth. So what did the team do well, uh, as you've looked back on it, Mick, to, to carry into a grand final? Yeah, I think definitely our, our contested game. Brisbane have been a, a really strong physical side that, you know, wear teams down with the way they compete around the ball. And uh, that's been a, a strength of ours, our ability to win the ball. Um, and probably teams have, have challenged us with, with their pressure and then, we haven't been able to connect as well from the inside to the outside. So I think, yeah, for the group to be able to compete consistently uh, against a strong physical team, I think that's what's going to hold us in good stead um, heading over to Adelaide on Saturday. Has that grown? It's grown year on year. Have you seen that growing within this season? Yeah, yeah I think within the season, uh, certainly we thought we were competing hard in the first couple of rounds. Um, we're still, if you look at the stats, like we're still winning contested possession and Felt like we were going okay in that area, but a round four trip to uh, Norwood, um, yeah, Adelaide taught us a valuable lesson in you know, physicality around the ball and speed and intensity. Uh, and then even the, the trip to uh, Metricon Stadium in round seven against Brisbane, they sort of jumped us in the first half just with their speed and intensity. So, yeah, we've had a few valuable lessons throughout the season. Um, but, yeah, I think the, the group has sort of absorbed them and evolved and We've been able to add players like Eliza West and Olivia Purcell to our midfield and um, even uh, been able to have Karen Paxman now on the, the outside on the wing. Um, yeah, we, we feel like our, our team's in, in good shape. Adelaide has, has been here and done this before. They, they've hosted multiple grand finals and, uh, and won a couple of titles. Are, are, they, are they an intimidating prospect in a grand final? Yeah, yeah, they've, they've, they've really been a benchmark in Brisbane in, in recent years, but Adelaide have, I guess, they've, they've forced us to evolve and improve as a team. Like I think um might have been season three, I think they, they handed us a 10-goal beating out at Casey Fields. I think that was the last game we've, we've lost out at Casey. But you spend an off-season being, uh, you know, reflecting and then thinking, OK, how, how are we going to match it against this strong, physical, competitive team? Um, and at that point, we had a long way to go. But we've now got a group that genuinely believes in themselves and 
they believe in our contested game and our strength as a as a unit. And I, I don't think the group holds any fears against the strength and physicality of Adelaide. And yeah, if we can match it with them on the inside, we, we think we've got some real threats uh, on the outside. And obviously forward of the ball, the really potent forward line. So um, yeah, the group is is excited to um, yeah to, to head over there and and um, equip ourselves well on the grand final and, and hopefully get the win. A lot of us are emotionally connected to this, Mick, right from the outset through Daisy Pierce. How um, how joyful to to see her be able to get her chance to play in an AFLW grand final, given what a significant figure she's been. Yeah, I think even this season, just to see how much joy she's getting out of playing her footy and you look back to season one and she's such a professional operator but in season one there just wasn't too many teammates that were at the same level um, and to see how the group has evolved and you know in the first couple of years really the results were dependent on Daisy having an outstanding performance um, and you know being supported by Karen Paxman but now um, she can just focus on playing her role and you know enjoying the success of her teammates like Alyssa Bannon in recent weeks and um, instructing and helping Taylor Harris, and um, yeah, just I know I've got a lot of joy out of just seeing her, you know, enjoying the opportunity just to play her role and be a part of the team, and not feel like she's got to carry the weight of um, the performance on her shoulders. So uh, it's nice to have a, a well-functioning team that she can she can lead and and be a part of. And yeah, I think she's as excited as anyone to to go over to Adelaide and and get it done. And um, I think that it's a it's a key motivating factor for for our group is. Um, given that she's given so much to footy and, and she'll continue to do so because the, um, the game's just in her, in her DNA. Um, it's definitely a, a driving force for us to, uh, to win on Saturday. She's taken on the, the new role and she's still in that All-Australian squad as you head to the W Awards tonight. So uh, you've, you've asked her to, to do something different. You've retooled her in a way. Is, how would you describe her? Uh, so there's no question around her aptitude, but but even her willingness and enthusiasm to do it. Yeah, oh, that that's it's quite unique. Like um, to have a captain that you know already uh, inspires the team, but to lead by example, just with her appetite to learn and improve, and she's constantly just um, whether it's through the men's game or um, our competitors in the women's game, she's you know looking at ways to improve and how can we get better as a team and then individually you know, how can she evolve her game And I think she's really enjoyed the, the changes in roles over the years and, and certainly more recently I think she's, uh, she's loving being up forward um, not as much pressure as the defenders face at times but uh, she's such a good um, contested player like one on one player very hard to beat and so crafty at ground level uh, it's, it's proving a, a real weapon for us up forward how are you going to approach the the week and the day itself, Mick? As um, have you, there's a bit of grand final experience within your club now from the the journey of last year. How how have you set yourself for for what's about to unfold? Yeah, we, yeah we've had some. It's a good point because we've had some really good conversations with the staff and um, players and leaders within the men's team, and a lot of the feedback has been like enjoy and embrace the week. Um, don't sort of shy away from it but they'd really focus on, on being present and maximising you know, each opportunity along the way. Uh, and then I think the group has got a lot of belief out of what the men's team has been able to achieve, and there's been some similarities in our journeys um, over the last six years. Uh, and then the language that is sort of shared across both programs, you know, simple things about you know, playing your role and um, looking to have a, you know, a trademark performance. If everyone can just have a trademark performance, then you know, we're going to... We're, we're going to be well, um, well equipped because we believe our, our best is good enough. So, yeah, that, there has been some consistencies, and, and certainly there's a um, a lot of belief uh, around the club at the moment that um, you know we've we've got the group and uh, we've got the capabilities of of winning. Taylor Harris has been here before a, a couple of times, so her third journey to a grand final. Do, do you will you draw on that at all? Will, will younger players draw on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I think we we had a meeting on Sunday just to uh, it was a Zoom just to sort of look at the week ahead. And um, Daisy was talking to the group, and then through to Libby Birch and Taylor. And Libby had had a premiership with the Bulldogs, and obviously a, a different experience to Taylor. And then Taylor spoke about, uh, yeah, I guess the the pain in in losing those two grand finals, and that's certainly something she's not interested in doing uh, third time around. But it is nice to have um, yeah that experience amongst the group. Um, 
and I think probably Taylor's uh, the key to her success this year has just been her consistency on and off the field. Um, she she trains with great intensity and competitiveness, and um, she, uh, she she was involved in a lot of contests on the weekends and um, was able to bring that ball to ground consistently and give others opportunities. So uh, excited to uh, to see her um, out there on Adelaide Oval on Saturday. Do you have any tricky selection decisions to make, Mick, or is it pretty straightforward for you? Yeah, I think at this stage, straightforward, but it's a um, it's an ever changing world at the yes. moment. But yeah, I think the success of the weekend and um, really pleased with everyone's intensity and effort and um, the way they contributed to the overall performance. So yeah, I don't think we're looking to force any changes. Um, so fingers crossed, everyone's everyone's healthy and we can um, reload and go again. And in your coaching journey, Mick, which we've admired uh, right throughout the the history of Melbourne in the AFLW, what what does this what does this landmark mean for you? Uh, oh, I think it's probably just a bit of validation for our program, uh, Jerry. Like you like to think you're doing the right thing, and then we've fallen short um, over a number of years. So it does make you think: Are we on the right track? And um, so I guess the opportunity to, to give this group a, a grand final and the chance to um, to win. And, um, yeah, I think it does make you go, OK, we are on the right track. The investment we've been making into our players, the, the staff structure, um, yeah, the, the game style, um, the focus on players' strengths and the sort of attention to detail that we've got behind the scenes. It, it, yeah, it's probably more validation that, yeah, we, we do know what we're doing and we're on the right track and, and we are good enough to, um, to be the best in the competition. You've got that lovely dynamic too is uh, that you don't have the individual star, I don't think, at the AFLW Awards tonight, but you've got this tremendous spread as Paxman's long been at the front of that and obviously Pierce and Harris uh, and Mithen and it's broader than that still. Is there uh, – so I don't imagine you'll have the best and fairest tonight, but but is that a bit of a, a tick for the uh, for the overall team setup? Yeah, I think so. And, and the group, they really enjoy each other's success too. So they, um, they're not really after the individual accolade and uh, yeah, they, they enjoy playing their own role within the team, which is based around their strengths. And um, yeah, then they, they get a buzz out of watching their teammates succeed. So I think we've got a, like a, a small uh, satellite event at Marvel Stadium tonight while the awards are on. Um, and I think, yeah, the group will, will enjoy, you know, hopefully seeing a few of their teammates pull some votes. But yeah, I'd be surprised if, if anyone from our group um, got enough votes to, to win it, because I think it'll, uh, it'll be shared throughout the season. So are you in maximum COVID protection at the moment? So obviously you're not at Crown. You're going to be elsewhere just to avoid the general populace? Yeah, it is, it is so unique. Like, yeah, even like the, the, some of the staff and um, players with kids, like you, you haven't got your kids going to their normal care, and so you're being extra cautious. And I think the, the N95 masks are, are on for extra protection. So... Yeah, no one wants to uh, miss out, and we've uh, we've come this far, so we may as well hang in there for another week and have a clean bill of health going into the weekend. But uh, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of people that are that are looking forward just to lowering their guard in the coming weeks. And um, yeah, it has has been a, um, I guess uh, yeah, I had to make a few changes, but it's been well worth it for for the path we're on. Hopefully, those changes come while you're celebrating a premiership. Mick, the very best of luck. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for your support.